Hi there, how you doing? Welcome to Get Productive with Microsoft Azure Deployment Templates. This is episode 8 entitled Deploy a Storage Account with a REST API. My name's Tim Warner. You know the drill by now. I've got two or three goals for you, and then I'm going to point you to timw.info slash arm to get to the course TOC. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to mix things up a little bit. Come on, life is too short. Our first goal is to perform a very brief review of REST APIs and then drilling into Azure Resource Manager. You'll know by the end of this lesson how to deploy an ARM template by using the ARM REST API. What is a REST API? I already discussed this a bit. I believe it was episode one or two, but let's review it one more time. REST is an acronym. It stands for Representational State Transfer. API is Application Programming Interface. And together, a REST API allows client-server communications over the hypertext transfer protocol. REST is an architectural style for software development that involves a number of constraints. One thing to keep in mind is that the request response cycle in REST APIs is stateless. So in other words, that is, each HTTP request is freestanding. And so there's not, at least initially, any idea of state. You can get complex with that with cookies and caching and so on and so forth. But bottom line is, you're going to do all of your requests in a single URL. And we're using the native methods or actions of the HTTP protocol to do create, read, update, and delete operations. You can see on the right this table with an attribution URL that a create operation is actually a post, read is get, an update or replace is a put, update or modify is patch, and delete is delete. It's very neat how we've got that lineup between the existing HTTP verbs and those CRUD read-write operations. It's wonderful because REST APIs means that it's ubiquitous and it's vendor neutral and it's open. It's a wonderful thing. REST APIs can be either public or anonymous or, of course, in Azure, everything is authenticated by default and we use Azure Active Directory as our identity store and we use the concept of the bearer token in order to identify who is doing those REST API requests. Authorization refers to the privileges that you have in Azure. Once Azure AD authenticates or validates your identity, Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC, controls the operations that you can actually request using the REST API. And again, Bearer is mentioning <laughs> that no matter what tooling you use, whether it's the Azure Portal or a Software Development Kit or Azure PowerShell or Azure CLI, those are all simply abstraction layers that fundamentally make these HTTPS REST requests of Azure Resource Manager endpoints. Azure Resource Explorer is a website you should be aware of, but be careful because you can do potentially catastrophic damage to your subscriptions if you do have proper RBAC permissions. Resources.azure.com is the DNS name, and you sign in with your Azure AD or your Microsoft account credential. What's cool about the Azure Resource Explorer, as you can see in the screenshot, is that it allows you to walk through your subscriptions, resource groups, and resources, and see the JSON representation of each. And you might be able to see, although the screenshot's a little bit small, on the right, you can do get, put, and potentially even post and delete operations directly from within this view. So speaking of abstractions, the Resource Explorer is a very bare metal abstraction that sits right on top of the ARM REST API. Now, the fact that this tool is in public preview means that Microsoft doesn't support the tool, so it's kind of a user beware situation. But from a learning and discovery standpoint, you can interact with the ARM REST API in the context of your subscriptions. And initially, the tool goes into read-only mode, which is going to keep the tough controls, the posts and deletes that can actually make changes to your resources, put those controls out of your reach. But you can flip the switch and put Resource Explorer and read-write mode. Be careful about that. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the ARM REST API to deploy an Azure Resource Manager template. As you know, if you've been following this series of lessons sequentially, we're dealing with resource group deployments. And what I've done to set the stage is in Azure Active Directory, I've created a service principle, basically a service account. And here we're looking at my ARM test three resource group. If I go to access control IAM and then go to role assignments, you can see that I've granted my service principle that I called REST API SP, contributor access to the subscription. This is important because when we're calling REST APIs, it is going to be authenticated, so we need a security context. 
this identity, REST API SP, is defined in Azure AD as what's called a registered application, and I created a secret, basically a glorified password or passphrase, so the service principal will identify itself by what's called its client ID. That's what Azure uses as kind of a username, and it will use the secret as its authentication factor. I need to be careful in over-explaining because I want to keep us really scoped tightly to resource deployments, but you can go to Pluralsight and check out my colleagues and my training on Azure administration if you want to know more about creating service identities. I just did that to set the stage. And also, this is not a course on Postman, although I'm using this tool to do the deployment. Postman is a fantastic tool. You can Use it for free, and then there's paid versions of the software. But for free, which is what I'm using, you can interact with your Postman account using a browser or a desktop application. And essentially, Postman allows you to design, test, and publish APIs. It's a great tool, like I said. And there's training at Pluralsight for Postman specifically. I'm just going to talk about the bare functionality to cover our use case for today. So specifically, what I've done in my Postman is I've created a collection called Azure REST, and I've got three operations that we'll work with. Let me bring them out one at a time. First, we need to get an Azure AD token. This is going to be a POST request, and we can see that the POST goes to login.microsoftonline.com forward slash your tenant ID. That's your Azure Active Directory ID. You can get all of this through the Azure portal or through Azure PowerShell or whatnot slash OAuth2 slash token. So that is the endpoint that we're going to request a token. You might be thinking under what identity? I showed you in the portal a moment ago that I created a service principle. We have to include that in our request. And Postman takes the different sections of your request and allows you to decompose them a bit. In our header area, I'm specifying a content type of XWWW form URL encoded. And in the body, I have a number of key values. Now, I don't have the time or the scope, or we don't even really need to get deep into what these are. But basically, we're going to pass in the client ID. This is basically the username of my service principal, the secret that I had Azure create. And I am going to delete this service principal after this lesson, if you're security-minded. The resource is going to be management.azure.com. That's the URI endpoint for Azure Resource Manager. All I want you to know here is that in the body, we're passing these URL encoded key value pairs where we're identifying ourselves to Azure as a particular service principle with a particular secret. And that will allow us to fetch an access token, what's called a bearer token from Azure AD. And once we've authenticated and we have that token, we then can do other operations. Now, lastly, we've got a test here. This is useful because what it will do is take the bearer token that we get back from Azure Resource Manager and set it as a variable. There's this whole concept of variables in Postman where you can take data elements that either you provide or come back from your API server and you can reuse them. So it's really helpful that this test is going to create a variable called bearer token because that's what we're going to need to pass into any other operations that we send into the API. Isn't that cool? So let's click send here and let's bring up our results pane down on the bottom. And we can see that I've got a bearer token and then there's the plain text value of the access token. Now, specifically, this is going to identify to Azure who I am. And it's not I, Tim Warner, it's I, that service principal, and what my claims are. In other words, my scope of authorization. So now we can, for instance, look at this other sample before we do our template. If we want to look at resource groups, we can look at the get operation under management, Azure com forward slash subscriptions, subscription ID, resource groups, and then a particular API version. You can get what the endpoint should be and what headers and parameters are available by looking in the ARM template reference. And I'm going to give you a link to that at the end of this lesson. Let me send that request in. And the way REST APIs work is that you normally get your data back from the server in JSON format. So now we can see our different subscriptions, including our ARM test three subscription that does have to exist in order to do our template deployment. So let's finish this out by going to this put operation operation in which we're going to deploy the ARM template. Let's look at the raw URL. Again, we're doing management.azure.com, subscription, subscription ID, resource groups, ARM test three, providers is Microsoft.resources, deployments, REST deployment, and then we specify the most recent API version for that. 
we look at our parameters, that's just where we can put our API version. And as you add parameters and headers, they dynamically get added here to the request that's going to the server. Again, Postman gives you all of these as convenience factors from when you're working with APIs. And header, this is really the important piece as far as authorization goes. We're specifying the content type as application JSON because we're going to send as part of our request a reference to the JSON template. And very critically, we have a key called authorization. And notice that the value is bearer. And then I'm specifying that bearer token variable that was created for us in the previous test. Lastly, if I go to body and scroll this down a bit, we can see there's many different ways you can do this, by the way. I'm doing what's called a linked template, where I'm specifying the template link element and then URI. And then I'm pathing out to the storage account create from the Azure Quick Start Templates repository. And we have to specify a content version and mode is either incremental or complete. We're going to discuss modes in a future lesson. So let me just click send here and let me bring my results pane up here. I mentioned a lesson or two ago that you should name your deployments. So in the activity log and when you look at the resource group deployment record, you can immediately know where that deployment came from. I'm specifying the name and that gets picked up as part of the request URL. After the resource provider deployments, you've got the name of the deployment and I'm calling it REST deployment. So we should be able to track that down by looking at the ARM test 3 resource group and come under deployments and we can see it's already succeeded right here, REST deployment. For further learning, the ARM REST API reference is definitely a site you should bookmark, timw.info slash temp8a. That's going to give you the fundamental definition of Azure Resource Manager REST API. The example that I did in my demo comes from John Gallant. His blog post is called ARM REST API in Two Minutes. Really great trainer, really great writer. TimW.info slash temp8b. And to get the Postman tool, for fun and for free, go to TimW.info slash temp8c. Thanks so much for your participation. Our next episode is actually something I wasn't planning on doing an episode for. It is a student-suggested topic. So please definitely surface any suggestions you have for this series. I'm listening and will take action if I think that it has broader interest. I've received actually more than one request to go deeper about those Visual Studio Code snippets. So we're going to do an episode called Understand VS Code Snippets, and we're going to focus specifically on the ARM Tools extension. The course TOC you might remember is timw.info slash ARM. My Twitter is techtrainertim and my DMs are open. You don't have to follow me to send me a direct message. My Pluralsight courses are at timw.info slash PS and my website is techtrainertim.com. See you in the next episode. Thank you.